So this is the uh, Specialized Fat Boy. It has a uh, aluminum frame or aluminium frame and a uh, carbon front fork. So it actually weighs in surprisingly 30 pounds, which is pretty heavy for a bike, but not really heavy for uh, a bike of this size and type. I got this about a year ago um, and it was mainly for putting my kids um, in the trailer. This thing's like really, really stable and trying to do, um, trying to pull the kids with a road bike in the trailer was just crazy. Any, any small movement they made like waving to somebody and it would, uh, it would make it twitch all over the place. So with this, it's rock solid. Like it's lower center of gravity, and uh, yeah, it's much, much, much safer bike. Um, but I found that it's exhausting though. Um, pulling two hundred pounds of kid and trailer, and we wanted to go a bit further, go up hills, like steeper hills and things. So um, it was kind of a plan always along to to look at a motor. Um, so we decided to uh, install the Bafang uh, mid drive. So this is the BB SHD motor that I put on the bike. I decided on this one because I could do it myself. Um, it's very reliable. You can buy the parts, you can repair it yourself. Anything goes wrong with it. Um, you can't really do that with uh, Bosch off the shelf stuff um, that's already part of a bike. Um, yeah, I, I, I like building stuff, so. This is really the way to go for me. So it just sits under the bottom here and uh, I had to use various spaces and that to get it into place. I'll see if I can. So if you can see that, I used a 7.5 millimeter spacer and a five millimeter spacer to bring it, this unit away, so to bring it out from the chain stay here that's running along there and it just just cleared it and then when I tightened it down it just just touched um, but it's level and that's important on the other side I had to use one more spacer And then the lock ring. This is the important part here that you must, must get right. It has to be flat against the bike because it has teeth that bite into the frame. Here. And then you tighten the lock ring round and that bites in. They recommended to use 60 foot pounds. I used 80. Um, some people were recommending a hundred, but I thought that was probably a bit excessive for uh, aluminum, sorry, aluminium frame. Um, I'm a Brit living in Canada, so uh, I keep getting aluminium wrong. <laughs> for the chain ring, I went with this uh, Lecky HD bling ring the 36 tooth uh version um the stock ring that comes with the motor apparently is is just crap uh everyone hates it it snaps chains the chain jumps off all the time so um yeah i didn't even bother trying it um and the company i ordered from didn't even bother to ship it because it it weighs so bloody much um so yeah i've got this this um, this one here and it has this special I'll see if I can get close what they call a wide narrow wide narrow tooth pattern so narrow or wide or I guess you can see there um, and that apparently sucks the chain on and keeps it on and stops it from from jumping off um, we'll talk about the chain line a bit um, one of the things that you are doing by putting this on is you are bringing the chain out. And 
unless you put on a big a bigger tooth gear like a 42 or a 46 or something some of those will then dish it back for you but i didn't want to do that because i wanted to keep the climbing power of having a smaller um, front chain ring uh, so what it's done is it's put the center of the chain line on probably about this third gear here or the fourth gear between the third and the fourth gear is now where the center of the chain line is which is meaning that it is unable to pick out the top two biggest gears which it's it's been fine i mean it'll climb the hills fine but i would like to use those larger gears especially for larger hills than the 9 or 10 11 percent that i've been on so far uh, so what i'm going to think i'm going to do is ditch the bottom two gears and shunt it all across and just put a, a spacer or a two of the big gears i don't know i've got to talk to a bike shop and find out if i can actually do any of these things um we'll see when it comes to changing gear um it's just using the standard cable uh, so what i've done is i fitted the recommended gear sensor here um, and it recognizes when you change gear when you push the uh, the button to shift and it cuts power to the motor here and that means you get a smoother gear change right because if you're running power the whole time right and you change gear it, it's going to wear out this sprocket at the back pretty quickly. It's actually really interesting how this thing works. I disassembled it just to have a look. Um, very, very simple. Um, all it is is the casing and the cable runs through it. And then there is a wheel and the cable runs tight against the wheel. And when you the cable is moved to change gear, it either turns it you know, left or right. And as soon as it turns it, it sends an electronic signal to the motor saying cut power, you cut power, and that's it, done. Very, very clever. Okay, so at the front of the bike, uh, we have the control system uh, that I put in. Um, so we have um, a twist throttle. I've cut the original handle down to fit that in so it, uh, it spaces correctly on the bike. Um, this is the controls uh, that takes you power on and then up a level on the pedal assist, down a level on the pedal assist. Um, this is uh, a cutoff switch that's run, I believe, to the other brake cutoff input. Um, but if there's any other problem, um, and again, you can also use it to change gear. Um, you just push down the bottom and it cuts it cuts all power to, to the motor. Um, you've got the central uh, display panel here. It gives you your speed and various things. And over on this side, um, this is a bit, uh, a bit haphazard at the moment actually I, I need to do a, a better job but this uh, this is a magnet here and a sensor and it detects the magnet being removed like this and that again cuts power uh, to the motor and I've been mainly uh, mainly using this one actually to uh, to change gear with as well I've not used the uh, the button so much as I thought I would uh, that was kind of an idea I had when I was planning this build So the battery is what makes everything run. And I got a 25.7 amp hour battery from a guy called Paul that's working out of a company in China that he set up called EM3EV. So I did quite a lot of research and uh, it was pretty clear to me that the tech that this guy is putting in his batteries and the amount of care that he takes in the manufacturing made it worth spending a bit of extra cash 
and getting his product. So what you can see here is uh, just a sort of little uh, power on switch, uh, on indicator, uh, you've got a charging cable, and this is the main, uh, it's called X something, X, I don't know, X90 or something. It's, it's an anti-spark connector, so uh, it just makes connecting the battery up pretty, pretty safe. And this is the battery itself, it's a triangle pack. Um, so it's been built inside this case, um, and it's basically 18650 batteries that are just in series and parallel to get you a total of 52 volts and 26, well, almost 26 amp hours out of the battery. Um, came with this kind of wicked bag. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Very secure. Weight sits on the, uh, the bottom tube here. Um, connectors run in here. Um, that's the only thing I don't, I'm not so happy about with, with the battery is the design of the connectors. Maybe it's how, uh, maybe it's how it all the components are in the battery that means that it has to come out the back quite like that. But I thought maybe, um, if it came out a little bit higher, it would be easier. Or if it was at the front here, because then your connectors could run down here and then you could do a straight hook in um, from, uh, from the motor down here. But, uh, you know, it's a small, it's a small complaint, really. Uh, the battery itself is awesome. Like, yeah, awesome quality. Uh, very, very happy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so to turn it on, you hold down the power button and that will turn on the screen and then it will come up asking for a password to be put in, uh, which is very important to me because with two kids, I really don't want them turning this on and, you know, sending it flying across the garage by playing about with it. So once it's on, you're greeted with this screen here and, uh, it's telling me that currently it's uh, charged to 56.5 volts. Uh, you can't really use the battery indicator very reliably on this because it's set up for a 48 volt system. Um, so it won't really show it depleting until this battery drops to 48 volts, at which point it's about 30% left anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty neat uh, screen. I was quite, quite pleased with how they've uh, kind of customized it. Um, pushing the, the middle button, the power button again, will take you through. Just show you that I've done 120 kilometers total. Uh, range doesn't seem to do anything. Um, and yeah, I've ridden for, well, probably about four hours. So uh, yeah, that's about it uh, for now. I'll uh, do another video about how it rides and various kind of changes that I think I want to make to, uh, to improve basically like the comfort of riding and the, uh, the ride quality. Um, if anyone has any questions, you know, just ask and I'll, uh, I'll do my very best to, uh, to, uh, to answer them.